What would convince you that the Sandy Hook shooting really happened? Nothing. I know in my heart and soul that it's a lie. The conspiracy world has evolved in the last 10 years. They have intruded into my life. I was stunned and I was pissed. The cruel stuff that they said about Allison. Dear God, if I am wrong, I've hurt many, many innocent people. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. It's tough, you know. I have a... <laughs> Sorry. You know, you have so many memories that come back to you, you know, just the things that took place during those days, you know, and. I just, I remember one state police officer standing at attention at this child's casket, the whole mass, and I remember it came over in the middle of the night one time, and he was sitting there reading to them, you know, like, and he said, like, I looked at him, he said, I know, he says, but this is what I'd be doing if I were home, and I'm sure this is what his dad would be doing if he were home, you know, so, well. Oh. It's been five years since the massacre at Sandy Hook Elementary School left 26 people dead. Funerals for eight of the 20 children killed were held here at St. Rose of Lima Church. The community is still healing, but that healing process has been disturbed as victims and community leaders are targeted online. I remember my older brother calling me and saying, um, don't go on YouTube. And I, he said, there's, there's some incredible things being said about you by, by these uh, hoaxers or whatever, if you, whatever group you want to call them. I mean, you know, you're in so much pain. You're, you're trying to focus so much on bringing healing and strength and hope. And you have somebody that just wants to deny this ever happened. Someone that, that wants to deny that we just made this up, that we fabricated these horrible tragedies. You know, and I, these caskets were right there in front of that altar with the body in it. They weren't actors. I, I don't understand it. Uh, we have had issues with one particular individual. You know, I've had to encounter the police. Uh, you know, uh, he arrived one time with cameras. I mean, are you, you able know, to but identify who his name, what his name is? Wolfgang Halbig. Wolfgang Halbig has appeared as an expert on the Sandy Hook shooting several times on Alex Jones's web-based show Infowars. And Wolfgang has been back up there. He's doing a serious investigation. He's been getting stonewalled, but has learned a lot. These were events that were specially shot, filmed, choreographed for CNN to have fun with it. It's not just some nuisance online. It, it affects real people here. Absolutely, yeah. He's very invasive, you know, and he's, and I, he may enjoy that, that, that kind of power he has, you know, that, I think all the additional security that's gone into so many institutions are for him as well. He went to school, I dropped him off, um, and no one knew that that was going to be the, the last day of his life. Leonard Posner is the father of Noah Posner. The six-year-old was the youngest child killed in the Sandy Hook shooting. He asked that we not reveal his face because photos of him and his son have been misused before. He also asked that we keep his location secret. He's had to move six times after being harassed by hoaxers. This was in Miami. Oh, the Holocaust Museum? Yeah. At the time, he was being playful, and mm -hmm. but now it's like he's part of that sculpture. Mm -hmm. So this was a place that hoaxers initially started to post hateful comments on these mm -hmm. photos, yeah. On photos of Noah. Mm -hmm. When did you first see or hear conspiracy theories about your tragedy? I, I saw them right away. I saw them in January of 2013, which was just uh, uh, like three weeks um, after the event. I released his birth certificate. I released his death certificate. I released his medical examiner's 
report. I released the school records, sort of showing the world, here's Noah, and, and this is his life. This is how he was born, and this is how he died. The documents convinced some, but other so-called truthers remained relentless. In 2014, after a school shooting in Pakistan, mourners were photographed holding images of school shooting victims, including Noah. Conspiracy theory host Alex Jones presented it to his audience of millions. The BBC articles and others that show Mr. Posner's son that they're saying is a child killed in a terror attack a few months ago in Pakistan. Do I know the whole story? No, I don't know the whole story. But am I being lied to? Absolutely, I'm being lied to. That was all they needed. And from there, Noah became a much larger focus. They find anything that's out of place, and the existence of something that's out of place immediately says that it's a hoax or a false flag or however they define it. Posner launched the Honor Network, an organization of volunteers that fight hoaxers and trolls online, flagging abusive content and copyrighted photos of his son. So these are YouTube videos. These are all videos. been taken down, yeah. These are all gone. And you flag them one by one. These are all one by one, yeah. So it takes a lot of time and dedication to do that. How many have you been able to take down? Thousands. He has received death threats online and on the phone. Did you hide your imaginary son in the attic? Are you still f him? You f Jew bastard? Jew bastard? Look behind you. Death is coming to you real soon. That voice was identified as 57-year-old Lucy Richards. She pleaded guilty to sending the threats and was sentenced to five months in prison. She told investigators she became angry after browsing websites that promote Sandy Hook conspiracies. That's the type of people that are now uh, communicating together. They're collaborating, they're using the web to do it. I describe it as the largest network of village idiots in the world. And so, as with any cult, um, you need uh, a dynamic leader. Uh, and there are several of them from, from the top, from Alex Jones, all the way down to people like Wolfgang Halbig in Florida. Posner filed a lawsuit against Halbig for harassment and publishing private information online. This has been playing out in court for a couple of years now, and we're about to head to a hearing and hear a number of motions in this case. We weren't allowed to film because a photographer from a website called We Are Change arrived before us. The judge in this case only allowed one camera. So this site, that often spreads conspiracy theories raising questions on tragedies from 9-11 to the Orlando shooting, had exclusive filming access. This is their video. The attorney representing Posner tried to block them from filming because they've posted videos on their YouTube channel before inciting a response from their followers, many of whom believe the shooting was staged. Also at the hearing, Tony Mead, the man who runs this Sandy Hook hoax Facebook page, a hub for Sandy Hook truthers. Mead is a huge supporter of Halbig and attends his court hearings. We spoke to him a day earlier at a beach near his home. Why do you think all these people would be lying and conspiring together? What, for because what purpose? society does not evolve through coincidence and happenstance. Society is engineered, okay? There are people thinking about how the world should evolve. Here's how We Are Change covered the hearing. They interviewed Mead as a Sandy Hook expert. So we all left there pretty much high five, smiles, and happy. Uh, and Liz interviewed me yesterday. She is, you know, basically a mainstream media propagandist who most likely is gonna try to make us appear like some kind of cons crazy conspiracy nut jobs, which we are, but we're also just trying to seek the truth. We caught up with Halbig's attorney, Caleb Payne, and asked about his client denying the Sandy Hook shooting ever happened, a question they didn't want to address in the hearing. But you think that's irrelevant to this case, is that correct? I don't have a comment on that. You don't have a comment on whether or not your client thinks the Sandy Hook shooting happened or not? I have to keep my client's rights. Do you think that matters in this case, whether or not he believed it happened? I have no comment on that question. Payne told us he's taking the case pro bono. All right, let's go to my house. You got my address? I do. So conspiracy theorists, they've always existed, but they've always kind of been on the fringe of society. 
But now, as we've seen play out in the 2016 election, conspiracy theorists play a role in the national conversation. So we've reached a point where I think they can no longer be ignored. A lot of people do not think it was an authentic certificate. How can you a say that people, if this if this reported, Wolf? But many people do not think it was authentic. His mother was not in the hospital. This case shows how fake news can lead to a dangerous situation. He allegedly pointed the gun in the direction of an employee and fired the weapon inside the restaurant. The origin of this crazy story was a posting on WikiLeaks. This is so deep. It's a deep state. They want retribution. This is now about an unelected part of your government looking to overturn the results of a duly elected president. The political witch hunt, it needs to be stopped. I want more people getting it like Sean Hannity. I want to see everybody get it. Your reputation's amazing. I will not let you down. You will be very, very uh, impressed, I hope. A couple months after that interview, the Newtown Board of Education wrote a letter to President Trump. It says, Jones repeatedly tells his listeners and viewers that he has your ears and your respect. It asked Trump to intervene to stop Jones and similar hoaxers. The board never got a response. Okay, um, so just first off broadly, uh, when did you become interested in the Sandy Hook case? Probably about 10 days, 10 days to three weeks after I saw breaking news. Because of what I do as a national school safety consultant, you couldn't have gotten me away from that television screen. And so you've sent a number of Freedom of Information Act requests yep. to the town of Newtown. How many did you send? I would probably, they will tell you that I have frustrated them. I think that's a good word to use. And the reason I send duplicate requests it's because they never answer the first request. He says he sent at least 30 requests to the town of Newtown. How much money has been donated to you? I would probably say I've got probably 88000 $88,000? Yeah. He's previously said he's received more than $100,000 in donations. If Sandy Hook was a hoax, why would all these people be involved no, in it? We're not prepared to answer a question like that. See, again, this. See, I've, no, who said it's a hoax? You've said it in the past, online. Are you ready for this? I'm repeating what other people said. These repetitions, that the Sandy Hook shooting was a hoax, that the children never died, that the government hired so-called crisis actors that fake the tragedy in a plot to grab people's guns, have been circulated countless times on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, and on blogs. Some profit by accepting donations on their sites through PayPal, and others on YouTube amass a huge following and cash in through advertisements on their videos. So 49 people died here at Pulse nightclub in Orlando, and almost right after it happened, there were people, hoaxers online, that said, it never happened that none of these people died. Orlando, Las Vegas, and most recently Sutherland Springs. Separate mass shootings, but the conspiracy theories that circulate online immediately after a high profile tragedy have a similar narrative that it was staged by the government in an elaborate plot to take away people's guns. It's a storyline Andy Parker is familiar with. You're victimized by the loss of your daughter. And then on the, the, the underbelly and the flip side or on the other end of it is you're victimized by people that think that you're a crisis actor, that the whole thing was made up. Parker's daughter was shot on live television while she was reporting on a story one morning in August 2015. The lives and promising careers of reporter Allison Parker, 24, and cameraman Adam Ward, 27, cut short. My heart was broken irreparably. I mean, I'll never be the same again. I live with this heartbreak and heartache and my soul was just crushed. It was ripped out of me. I never watched the video of Allison being killed. You know, fortunately, you know, we weren't up, we didn't see it and never will. It's, it's, um, it's still out there like a booby trap. I had a, a YouTube 
channel, myself a YouTube page. It was basically just, you know, Allison's dance recitals and kayaking videos and just, you know, family kind of stuff. I had some old commercials because I was a professional actor, you know, way back when, and I had these commercials that were on videotape, and I thought, well, this is a good place to archive them. So I uploaded this stuff. I went to my page, and I saw thousands of comments and thumbs down, and I was stunned, and I was pissed, you know, that, that somebody could have, could be that low and, and vile and do that kind of thing. Parker reached out to Posner, the father of Noah, who was killed during the Sandy Hook shooting, and is actively fighting hoaxers. Parker gave him permission to act on his behalf to flag videos of Allison. They are trying to be cooperative, but they're just not. I mean, you talk to Lenny, who's trying to pull these things down one by one, and they've been successful in, in eliminating a lot of the hoaxer stuff but it's not because Google's been proactive. And I would have had to do it myself. And that's asking, you know, can you imagine, you know, someone telling you, well, if you want this done, you have to look at the review the video and then flag it. I mean, I can't do that. Parker has been fighting to get the attention of policymakers in Washington, D.C., in hopes that something can be done to rein in the conspiracies and false information online. Some of them aren't even aware. You know, they had, they had no idea. And what I tell them is, is that, you know, I'm victimized once, losing the most precious thing that I ever had. And then on top of that, then I'm gonna get harassment. Uh, and I have, a, there's a company that allows that to happen. You don't want to impede the First Amendment. That having been said, you know, there needs to be some kind of policing. And if, if Google or Facebook or Twitter, if they're not going to self-police or self-regulate, then it probably, I think the next step is, we've got to see some legislation in there that will um, hold them accountable. Part of the problem, tech companies are having a sort of identity crisis, and they're facing intense scrutiny on Capitol Hill. Twitter accounts created as part of the Russian propaganda campaign help the Russians form an entire army of automated Twitter bots and trolls that overwhelmingly supported one U.S. candidate. Let me ask Google this to be fair. Are you a media company or a neutral technology platform? Uh, we, we're uh, the technology platform primarily. That's what I thought you'd say. Yeah. You, don't think you're, you don't think you're one of the largest, news, the largest newspaper in 92 countries? Uh, we're not a newspaper. We're a platform for uh, sharing of information. We don't write any news articles, so certainly we're different than a media company, but that doesn't mean we don't have responsibility. Where we're trying to go after is the false news, the fake, the hoax. So far, that social media crackdown on disinformation and made-up news has largely ignored Truther accounts, which still post prominently on Facebook, YouTube, and other sites. We reached out to these tech companies to ask why that is. A Facebook spokesman told us they've taken steps to disrupt financial incentives for hoaxers and collaborate with third-party fact-checkers to vet news articles. But he also said this page, Sandy Hook Hoax, listed as an education website, and others like it, don't violate company policy. One question now is how far Congress can or should go to regulate social platforms without crossing free speech concerns. On Capitol Hill, Parker met with Senator Tim Kaine's office to discuss the issue. He shows us a letter the senator wrote to the CEO of Google, asking the company to address hoaxer videos rampant on the platform related to high-profile tragedies like his. Having a dedicated office to work with the bereaved to remove this footage or demonetize it rather than only being able to communicate through customer service could ease the burden on these families. Well, that's nice. It is. A couple weeks after the hearing, Posner dropped the case against Halbig. Two years and over $20,000 later, he says he doesn't think he can get a fair trial in Lake County. The Sandy Hook hoaxers now feel emboldened I do believe Leonard Posner, he is that domino that's going to make the whole thing just fall apart. For Posner, 
The death of his son on December 14th, 2012, is an irrefutable fact he has to live with. And now with the chaos of the internet, dealing with hoaxers that accuse him of faking it, also part of his reality. I, I see this as the very, very early age of the internet. And I see the problem getting, uh, continuously getting worse, as it has been. So when we started working on this, this was completely uh, uh, out in left field. Now it's, it's shifted into more of the mainstream because the group of victims uh, is growing. This vigil is held by the Newtown Action Alliance and it marks the five year anniversary since the Sandy Hook tragedy. Since then, there's been so many other mass shootings that this event is meant to honor all victims of gun violence. Allison Parker, August 26, 2015. Becky Slomsky, 2015. The students and staff of Sandy Hook School, December 14, 2012. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome someday. Oh, Do you think that Las Vegas? the Las Vegas shooting was real. I don't, I think everyone is wondering what happened in Las Vegas at this point. Why is there so much cover up? And what about the Boston Marathon bombing? The Boston Marathon bombing has been exposed 100% by alternative media. And what about the Pulse nightclub shooting? Again, exposed 100%.